If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe, rate and review my show to allow me to bring more amazing guests like Tamara on the show who are really going to help you break through those barriers in your career. So as a kid, how many of us ever dreamt that the things that we loved doing or the things that we really enjoyed would ever translate into much in our adult career? Well, my guest today, Tamara Thompson, did exactly just that. So Tamara is an award-winning documentary film director, an entrepreneur, and CEO of Serious Take Productions. She began her journey as a young kid, filming YouTube videos, making things that she really enjoyed and things that she thought were funny. Her family said to her, Tamara, why don't you make a career out of this? You obviously love doing it and you've got such a natural talent for it. So she sure did. She began studying to be uh, a film director and film producer, and as a result, started her own business, Serious Take Productions. Tamara's specialty is in video production, where she helps entrepreneurs and businesses to inspire others through video and help create amazing brands through storytelling and connecting with others and positioning yourself as the brand leader in your industry. Tamara shares with us how she left corporate America in 2012, built her business and her team, generating multiple five figures a month consistently. This is such a great interview, so let's get started. Guys, welcome to another episode of the Career Breakthrough Series. I'm your host, Paul Ames, and on the show today, I've got an incredible guest, someone who's really going to teach you how to carve out incredible stories and messages for your business and your personal brand, and how to really take it to the next level. I'm talking about Tamara Thompson. So Tamara has a business called Serious Take Productions, which, funny enough, started from uh, when she was a young girl where she basically was recording YouTube videos that were you know, co- like funny videos or things that she really enjoyed uh, filming. And her family would then say to her, you know, Tamara, why don't you make this into a career or you know, take this into something you really want to do? So after de- com- completing a degree in filmmaking, Tamara started Serious Take Productions. Uh, so Serious Take Productions really help you create a message and... Uh, you know, form out your, your journey and, and uh, yeah, really take yourself to a new level with your brand and your business. So, Tamara, thank you so much for agreeing to come on the show. I really appreciate your time. It's a pleasure to finally uh, connect, like I said, face-to-face. So, uh, if you could just give my audience a bit of a background into, I know I touched on it, but, uh, yeah, background into who you are and basically, you know, what, uh, what your upbringing was like for you growing up. Sure. Yeah. Thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm, I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, I mean... I'm sitting there listening to it. I'm like, that's everything I usually say. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. We got it covered. <laughs> yeah, no, well, it was, it was funny because, um, but yeah, no, it, it started like really way back, like with the day, like seven years old, like my dad got the camcorder. My little brother was born, so I'm seven years older than him. So I guess he was the more important baby. He got the video camera. <laughs> When he was born, not me. No, <laughs> no, he was cute. So that was when my dad got a camcorder, and that was when it really started because like YouTube wasn't around yet or anything like that. Yeah. So I was like running around, and I like I was like kind of like that rebellious kid where I like tried to sneak the camcorder to school on the school bus. So I'd always like record uh, really fun, funny videos with my neighbor in middle school, and we'd like jump on the couch to like. Bush's song glycerine and you know, oh, yeah. you know all this crazy stuff and uh yeah but when youtube came out um i started creating like really silly videos and um but like just i was older i was in my 20s at that point um but yeah i did that for like four years and i had um produced some different video documentaries and i had built this page that had i had over eight hundred thousand views at one wow. point and you know, it was crazy because I, you know, I was doing that for fun. And, and during that time was when my family was like, really like, I was older. So they're like, go to school for, go back to school. Cause I was in the fitness industry, but I wasn't really happy in the industry. Like I know how important health and fitness is, but the, I'm so creative that like, I was like bird, squirrel, like I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> and so like I was always been creative and and so yeah it just wasn't the right fit for me and then it was funny because that one day my friend um when I started going back to school for filmmaking and in my late 20s um after the fitness industry my friend asked me there was a trainer she's like will you create like training videos like fitness training videos I'm like oh cool yeah we can get creative yeah, this, this angle this angle you know all this stuff and that excited me so I was like I knew this was this was a fit because I love videos and I love movies and films and yeah so I, I really just shifted into going back to school started the company 
And, but the thing is about that one YouTube page is the way that Serious Take Productions was formed was the fact that I didn't want to be known as just like another YouTuber. You know, a lot of people at that time were just doing really funny videos and now people have gotten extremely creative and professional and training oh, sure. and stuff like that. But I wanted people to take me seriously. So hence where the word Serious Take Productions came in. Nice. <laughs> like I wanted to, to produce and become a film director basically. And and so that's where, it, but I ended up deleting that YouTube page that had over 800,000 views. And I was like, oh, what was I doing? Like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to be known as this silly YouTuber girl, right? Yep. But that's kind of where it started. And I was like, maybe I should just let it, I still have video clips from it. I downloaded stuff before I left. So I share things from stages all the time. And sometimes I'll throw up some of those random things like I. <laughs> Blair Witch 3 spoof and you know nice. oh, <laughs> I'd like, love to say it <laughs> I might have to like share that one and some people are like what, <laughs> like, what? that camera I'm like yeah. yeah yeah I'm very uh I was like you when I was young I was introverted and I you had you had mentioned to me a little bit about being introverted yeah and I was definitely. when I was younger and I just busted out of my shell in, in high school and and stuff like that so definitely not anymore but uh i was always more comfortable creating videos i don't know how you are but some people were more i was more um interested in creating videos like by myself with nobody around because i could just post it and just go and people just think i'm extroverted right yeah but then when i but then now I speak on stages and I, and I love it. And it's crazy. Cause I was like this, like my mom's always like, there you, this shy little girl and you just blossom and this expert. And so it's just interesting though, like how I've kind of taken, we grow up in life and we do different things, but like how video has always been in my space. Like I've always been interested in it. And finally now I've built a successful business now where we create and connect and inspire through impactful stories. And Definitely. that's what, and the way that we got into that when we did a rebrand was after I had produced one of my latest documentaries a few years ago, inspired by 11, where I interviewed uh, 11 top, um, experts in their niche and successful entrepreneurs where I wanted to learn from them. I wanted to learn, you know, digital marketing, you know, lead generation, publicity, um, you know, coaching, mentorship, mindset, whatever it was. I like chose people. I was like, I want to learn from them, 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 you know, That's and awesome. I did. And so from there it just kind of shifted and then I, I rebranded it. Cause I was like, everybody has a story to tell. So that's the whole purpose of it is no matter what your story is, everybody has a story to share. And so do brands and businesses. So and video is so key these days, right? Definitely. Thanks so much for sharing that Tamara. I really appreciate that. And it's so true what you said. Like I've had so many people and heard so many people say, Oh, but you know, my, my life is boring or I've never had anything exciting. And it's like, you know, but there's things that we've all gone through. We've all gone through unique experiences and journeys that there's always something that we can educate other people on who are potentially going through that or are about to go through that. So there's always a key takeaway in everything we've gone through in life. So there's something we can share for all. So I think that's, yeah. that's, that's brilliant what you're doing with your business. I love, and I love how it started. I think the serious takes really cool how you got the name. Well, it's funny because uh, when we did the rebrand, when we were working with a specific agency, they were like, but you seem so fun. And, you know, all of a sudden I, I was like, but the, the whole thing is like when I step on set, if I'm on the production or if it's our team or whatever, like we're, we're very professional in like the whole process that goes through it from the storyboarding aspect to the key messaging to, you know, when you're on set, you have to make sure everything's on key, you know, on time, like everything's set up correctly. Like you have to have proper management, oversee things. Like I'm very, not, I'm very serious on set, but I mean, I'm, I'm lighthearted and have fun, but I was like, serious take is definitely like, I'm going to keep that name. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, so I just wanted to touch on what you just said. So obviously I've, um, I've got a lot of my audience or a lot of my clients that are in career, uh, career transition. So just touching on how you said you used to be in the fitness industry. How did you find, how hard did you find or what were some of the biggest obstacles that you overcame in transitioning from the fitness industry into the, uh, the film and uh, production industry? Well, you know, I'm just like, I'm a massive action taker. So I'm just like that person that just like, if I have my eyes set on something, I'm just going to go do it. You know, like it was weird. I noticed this trend when I went into different industries, like, like I worked in the fitness industry for eight years, but I would keep positions and roles with different companies for about four and a half years. It was really weird. Like I, um, before that I had uh, worked in the uh, child uh, educational, um, uh, 
platform. So I was there for like four and a half years with the YMCA and then four and a half years I went into the fitness industry. Then four and a half years I basically <laughs> was with another like health club, at, you know, and I was like, there was like this trend. I was like, am I going to make it past my own business? You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but like when I was like transitioning into new fields, it, it was always something that I, I, I thought in my mind that I was passionate about it. I think yeah. when people are like trying to make a decision, like, cause a lot of people don't associate with, um, you know, career and passion and being mm -hmm. something that you love. And what, I, don't even, I can't quote all the statistics, but they're saying like over what 70% of where I'm in and the United States, they say that people are dissatisfied with their jobs. Yeah. It's even you higher know? now here in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> like 83 or. Yeah. I think it's about 80%. Yeah. It's really bad. And it's so, you know, we go through life and, you know, you know, it's, it's so hard because at the same time, you know, you're living life and you, you live once so that, you know, unless I'm re reincarnated or something or whatever people <laughs> believe, but as far as I know, you know, we only live once and we can, we have to be able to live, you know, happily. Like the entrepreneurial journey definitely is hard and a lot of people don't share like all the hardships and falling failures and stuff like that it's all, like you see these people that are like sharing these stories they're like i was from here and then boom i was, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was like what's all the stuff in the middle yeah you know? exactly but i just you know when i'm speaking to other people though it's like if you're not passionate about something please just try something else like just do the research and look into something go talk to people ask questions join forums facebook is amazing to just go out and connect with other people especially Definitely. like entrepreneurial space or somebody that's interested in starting their own business you know my business partner danielle it's, it's funny like her her family um her parents have worked in the same um industry and same jobs for most of their lives you know wow. and it was funny because uh, we were talking to her father and, and uh, he, he's inspired by us because of the fact he was like, I want to make, I want to make Louise, Louisiana hot sauce. And, <laughs> That's and awesome. I'm like, yes. I'm like, just go for it. I'm like, yeah, do it. it. <laughs> so he's like, right now he's like producing different flavors. He's oh, like going through cool. like the branding of it. Yeah. It takes time to put it together. But if you don't put out samples and go see if people like it, like you'll never be able to do something and, you know, or be able to do it on the side if he wants to retire and, you know, do something you love and you like hot sauce. So do it, do it, you know, cause you can turn anything, almost anything into a career, you know, just, yeah. you just have to think think a little bit out of the box or do some research on that. But, um, I think it's, I think it's hard for people to try to transition or think when they have the word stability, but what's yeah. stability anymore in jobs, right? Exactly. That's brilliant. Man. I love that you've inspired a guy to start his own hot, hot sauce brand. That's amazing. And uh, I can't wait to hear if it comes out and, uh, what, I'll what send becomes you of some. It. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's so true what you said, like, you know, I always look at the same thing. Um, you know, you've got one life to live. You might as well enjoy what you're doing. You don't know when you know, things have changed and things could get worse. Mm -hmm. um, I do find that with a lot of clients that come to me for like, you know, career transition or they're just confused and don't know where to go. I find a lot of it comes down to they don't really know themselves or what's important to them in their career. So I find that like, I know everyone rants about it, but core values are one big one. But then also understanding your natural Mindset. abilities. <laughs> but with natural abilities, it's actually finding something that you enjoy because we could, for example, have a natural ability of being able to sort out huge amounts of paperwork, but we might actually hate it. So I try and get people to align, you know, the natural abilities they actually enjoy and aligning like, you know, your values, strengths, skills, uh, everything like that. So, well, you know, takes, I think that's takes discipline too. discipline and being able to have that mindset that you can do something because yeah. most people it's sometimes it's as simple as changing your, your words, you know, yeah, exactly. Uh, from, from I can't to I will, you know, yeah. you know <laughs> whatever it is. I'm like, stop. It's instead of saying, if, you know, you say, when, when yeah. I do this, you're setting yourself up, you know, for a, a better path than if I can do this, you know? So true. That's right. Yeah. Just reframing. That's such a powerful tool. So Tamara, I'd love to know, um, what are some of the, the biggest strengths, uh, or biggest, um, some of the biggest nat uh, natural traits or biggest positive traits that you've got and positive habits that have really helped you contribute to your success in your business. What do you think has really helped push and drive you along? Uh, can I say perseverance? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Persistence. Um, I, I'm, I'm that person that 
uh, I don't take like no for an answer. Like, oh, I love me neither. I love it. <laughs> but you, you know, it's not in the sense of being like pushy though. It's more yeah. like, okay, so you reach out to some uh, example. So when I was directing this last film inspired by Levin, when I was doing personal outreaches, you know, I had people's like email addresses or contact numbers or whatever. And I do all the research and then send a very detailed message email, inviting them to be a part of this, this project. And I, I had a lot of people say no. And, and then I would just ask, you know, like, well, why? Like, <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah. What, what can we do to work with you? So is it the timing? Is it your, yeah, is your schedule flexibility? Like, what can we do for you? Like, what can we provide for you for you to be a part of this experience? And so I turned a lot of no's into interests, into maybes, into yeses. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome. I got on phone calls, you know, and you just, and I'm so passionate about things. So when I hop on a call, it's really easy for me to, you know, that people can hear it in my voice and Definitely. talk to me in person. They can see how passionate I am about what I do and create. And so, and it's all about the experience. So when I get to that point, even with um, clients, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily work with us right off the bat. You know, sometimes they'll, they'll wait and they'll, they'll work with us down the line. And they always say like, it's the power of the follow-up, right? So yeah. I'm like the, the queen of the follow-up they say. And so like what they, <laughs> what I've been, what I've been, Told is that you know just being in people's space and just always being around and you know not going past 90 days if there's somebody that you want to keep connected with you know just follow up see how they're doing like you don't sure. if, even if it's for business you don't need to pitch to them like you just hey I just want to see how you're doing you know what's going on with with your business right now like just start a small conversation that you know can eventually lead into a follow-up of a business conversation and so I don't know I've, I've been through a lot <laughs> of, of different things in my life and those breaking points that I had in my life um, basically um, molded me to become uh, very tough in certain situations and so like one one thing i celebrated over six and a half years of sobriety, which is a part of my long story, but I won't, I won't go into all that. But just when you change your lifestyle and you think of things differently, like it really was when I changed my mindset and shifted my thoughts and tried harder to just always figure out a solution. My old, when I worked in corporate, one of my uh, producers, project managers, they called me troubleshooting Tamra. <laughs> 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 I, would just, I would just, I wouldn't take no for an answer, even from like an editing program. I'm like, it's editing, editing. they're like, this is failing. Like we can't recover it. I figured out how to recover like thousands of dollars of footage for this company. Wow. Like I would be there 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Like I just always want to give up, you know? And so it's like, just not about quitting. Like there's certain things in life that, that yeah, maybe it's something you just have to let go of, but you move on to something else that's going to be better. Right. So. Wow. Thanks so much, Tamara. And you should be so, so proud of yourself. I'm, I'm so proud of you for, for being able to push through that and to be able to overcome the, such adversity. I, I can't even imagine how difficult it would have been. So, and I absolutely love your energy. I love talking to people like yourself where you've got so much like energy about you. It's funny, like a lot of the things you just said, I've heard a lot of people say the same thing as well, where they're like, when you talk about what you love and what, what flows for you, like with my career stuff, it's the same people go, Oh, you just really love it. And I was like, yeah, I do. So yeah, it's, it's such an amazing thing. And that, that reflects off on other people and attracts other people to you too. Yeah, um, so, so Tamara, um, I just touching on one key aspect and that I think is so crucial what you just said is on the follow-up. So uh, I found this is such a major area in careers for people that people are afraid of following up. Like say if they put in for a job or something like that and they don't follow up to say what's happening, what can I do better? How can I tweak my application or stand out a bit better in your company? And it's, it's something that's so crucial. Like I think in any area of life, like you need to follow up on things like you need to, you know, keep in contact with people and reach out. And especially with careers, you need to find out how you can better yourself or what you can do to, you know, put yourself in the best light. So that was a great takeaway. Thank you for that. 
Yeah, you know, and, and people will get, might be afraid or, you know, fearful of certain things, but people I've learned respect you more when you Definitely. do follow up and they're like, oh, like the people that we've hired through our company, uh, there's one of our editors. I, I loved it because <laughs> all he would do was just follow up. <laughs> he was like, hey, he's like, is that, is that, is, I was like, I'm traveling. I'll, I'll reach back out. You know, thanks for you know, applying. Like, that excited you're excited about working with us and stuff. And he's like, what, what can I do to work with you? I'm like, Ooh, you sound just like me. <laughs> like, oh. Oh, and you know, cool. he's, he's been working with us the last year and you know, he's, 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 uh, it's cool. Cause we helped him figure out what he wanted to do too. Cause he started off as our video editor, but he also was a videographer and he's had the conversation with us that he would like to continue to keep pursue into just like the videography side that that's oh, perfect out his passion so we want to bring people on board that are passionate about what they do and if they see some sort of opportunity that where they want to shift their role and they're more passionate about that we want to support that in, in any way that we can so that's important to find other people on your team that because if you have somebody that's a debbie downer or a negative nancy or whatever yeah. that's bringing like females in there why is it always the females name in there <laughs> <laughs> oh there's but, plenty of males in the <laughs> <I> <laughs> Tons of <laughs> cameras. No. Um, <laughs> those are the good ones. No. So, but you know, we have to make sure that the team um, is is able to work together too. So, when when you're if you're in a situation, you're working in a career, and there's something that just not right, like that. When I the last corporate position I left, I was producing for um, vendor. We were a vendor to Microsoft, so we had oh, wow. really high level, high stress. And then they put the Starbucks on my account right before I left. Oh, <laughs> and um, and I was like, oh wow, this is crazy. But the there was one point though in that like I loved everybody on the team, but there was a situation that would arise with one of the team members on our Microsoft sets. Uh, every single time and I asked the team I said is this individual always like this on every Microsoft set like is the tension is the stress is like you know like my neck was like oh, you know? and they're like yeah we just we just deal with it and I was like that's not how I work no. <laughs> and so uh it got to the point where I was like you know what I can do this and I can do this in my own company and I can do this with people that I like that aren't gonna treat me like that you know, and we're not going to treat our employees like that either. So, and our team members. So yeah, I literally picked up, left. I had been putting together uh, a couple different proposals. One with a company I was doing freelance with, uh, a, a cosmetic company. And I said, you know what? If they go accept this year contract where I'm making more money than I'm making <laughs> a corporate job and I get them to say, yes, I'm going to leave this behind and I'm just going to go for it. And I did. And I never looked back and I kept going with serious take production. Wow. Uh, so, but you just have to believe in yourself and just ask, ask exactly. people, ask questions, find ways that you can do something that you enjoy or write a list down of things that you think you might be interested in and just do the research on it and really see if it's something that you want to go for with your career. You know, if you want to change positions in something, if you're just not happy. Yeah, that's brilliant. Oh, you're, you're sharing some incredible insights and takeaways. I, I, one of them I have to touch back on is um, what you said with uh, your editor who then became a videographer. I think that's so crucial for so many people in their career as well, where a lot of people just get comfortable and sit in the role. You'd be, you might be looking out the window going, I could be doing that role or I could be going up to that next position that thing I was going for, or, you know, they've got this vacant and, and then people just put it off. They, they, they're afraid to reach out. But I think if you really know what your, your skills and where your, you know, your, your biggest attributes lie, reach out and move up and say why you'd be the best position, uh, best fit for that position like what you did with your, like what your editor did. I think, you know, you've got to let people know if people don't know that, you know, you're the best position or if you're not putting yourself in the forward light, then nobody's going to hire you or no one's going to put you in for that position. So yeah, that was, that was a really good takeaway. I love that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I just always encourage people to try something new if they feel like they're just stagnant in, in their position or life. Like if you're in accounting and you're over here addicted to social media, maybe you want to go learn more about social media and be the social media manager. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, That's like right. That. I think it's, yeah, like you said as well, another point was like really trying new things that so many people think they've got to take this massive jump off a cliff to be able to get into a new career when you can, you know, take small steps, you can kind of test the field a little bit. And 
that's where, yeah, also what you said about, you know, reaching out to people, that's something I do and stay in contact with people. So, you know, I've said it many times, like connections are the most powerful thing and that's what's really going to help you. It's the old thing is who you know, not what you know. So, you know, what you know does count for, you know, a bit of it, but who you know can really help you open up some doors for your career and your business. So. No, it's true. And the sense on that, that uh, cosmetic company, you know, I built that relationship with that company for a couple of years before I actually put together that proposal and jumped, you know, into the full on entrepreneur uh, journey, like myself, you know, with the company. So um, a lot of people, it, some people will be like, Oh, just, just, just go do it, you know? And, and I'm, I'm like that, but like, there's a lot of people out there that are like, well, make sure you, you know, feel stable like some people be like we'll have three months of income in your bank or whatever it is yeah. like you need to make sure that you're in tune with yourself and how you live if you're the person that pay, like lives like paycheck to paycheck or you know if you're like you save and you're like i feel safe to like go out and pursue another career or take chances like i just always encourage people to take chances but you know listen to you too yeah, like if exactly. if you're like or at least start researching for something if you're looking yeah. for something else and, and, and save or figure out like what you can do as a backup plan if something doesn't quite go your way. Cause you know, there's a, I have a lot of failure. It won't go into all of them, but like, there's so many like failure stories, like just getting shut in the face. Like, you know, like not like literally, well, <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, just, just, you know, the people just need to, to stay on track and, you know, if anything inspires them to want to try something new and if they're, you know, have a family or they're in a relationship, you know, like always confide in those people that are around you, you know, as well and, and just tell them what your thoughts are because you want to be open with the people in, in your family and around you all the time too. Like, hey, you know, I'm not happy, you know, with my career. Like, do you, what would you say if I, you know, step out and try something different you know do you support me through this process um things like that because people you know some people are or we can all we all should be selfish in some ways but then there's other ways that we need to think about our surroundings and things going on too yeah so. definitely that's so true i think there's yeah two parts that it's really good to have you know the support and you know encouragement from your know, friends and family but on the flip side of it too i think too many people let that influence too much of their decisions in their career like I've worked with quite a few clients who, especially when I was working with a lot of students, high school students and uni students, where they've let their parents influence so much of their decisions. And you can tell that that's not what, really what they want to do. It's almost like they've just got this you know, conflict inside them where part of them wants to go one way, but they feel obliged to go a certain way because of you know, parental responsibilities or peer influence. So yeah, I think it's like a fine line between the two, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, no, I agree. Because uh, I remember when I went off to college, all my friends were going off to four year universities. I was in Washington State and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And at the point, I loved playing basketball. And so I went and played basketball for a two year community college. And at the time, I was like, I'm going to be in the WNBA. Oh, I'm going to be like the next Rebecca Lobo or at least <laughs> Leslie, but not at all. <laughs> and so, so yeah, that was my passion, like back when for a while but <laughs> I love sports and um so but but yeah I mean I I told my family because I was actually I paid for my college I bought my my own cars my oh, family wow. raised raised me to be that have a career have a job in place my mom was actually an entrepreneur though she had her own uh crafting decor business for over 12 years so I actually learned a lot of things through her through like growing up as well. So yeah. I knew she always supported entrepreneurial routes, but she always said, you know, do something that you love. And, you know, and, and I told her, I was like, well, I don't want to spend my money on a four-year college when I have no clue what I want to do. Exactly. <laughs> and so, so I didn't. And then I, later on, I went and, um, in my late twenties, when I went back to school for filmmaking, that was when I made the large investment and, you know, <laughs> paying down student loans uh, yeah. <laughs> for a while. You know? I was like, those are always fun, uh, um, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. But yeah, but I just encourage people to go after what they, if they, if they're not ready either, I don't know what, what you think on this, Paul, but you know, I look at it and people go right after high school, you know, and sometimes they're like, 17, 18 years old. And I feel like a lot of people don't know what they want to do no, like at that not. age. Like they just throw us in this industry of having to go off to a, a college or a university and it's just the thing to do. And so, you know, entrepreneurship, 
you know, is becoming so big, you know, and then like social media influencers and, and young millennials just taking over online, yeah. do, doing things they love. And that's so cool to see that, that people oh, definitely. are, are like, you don't have to go to a university if you, you, if you want to, like, please go for it, get that yeah. education. Cause it's important to have education. So. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And that's like probably one of the biggest frustrations with my, my industry as well, or like with the career industry is like, I see so many universities and high schools where they just kind of, they don't open people's eyes or they don't open students eyes enough to what the real world's like outside of school or the educational field. And as you said, I think it's brilliant. I think university and further study is really good. If that's something you absolutely need to get into that career, or if you need that to progress into the next part of your career, even for people looking to progress in their career, if you, people have said to me, I had a client the other week, uh, where she said to me, oh, I want to study, study a master's degree in uh, social work, I think it was. And she was like, I said to her, well, is there any purpose to doing this? Um, you know, is it going to better you in your career? Is it going to help you advance? Is it going to help you with a new role? And she goes, no, I just thought it'd be cool. And I'm like, well, that's like a four or five year investment financially and you know, mentally. And yeah, you know, is that if it's not benefiting you, what's the point of even doing it? I think that's the thing like... I don't know. That's just my view. I think you've got to be realistic and a lot of people don't even understand employment projections. That's another key area where, you know, they, they study these degrees, universities and colleges just throw you in, they'll take your money. They don't tell you, say to you, what do you want to get out of this? You know, what career? Okay. This is the growth industry. This is not, this is going downhill. This is going completely. So I find that that's a really important area. I've noticed a trend in where, you know, people just aren't, don't have their eyes open to things. So yeah, that that's definitely a big thing for what I've seen in my field. Yeah. I, um, I know I just always encourage people to, to go after something that they're passionate about. If it's entrepreneurship or if they want to be a doctor or a dentist or a florist or whatever it is. I mean, look at Barbara Corcoran. She wanted to yep. start a flor florist company. She was like, <laughs> I just failed epically. Like, <laughs> Look at these people that like failed over and over again before they, they found their niche and then she became real estate, you know, and then investor and all that stuff. And now look at Barbara Corker. Oh, she's, she's amazing. <laughs> yeah, she's absolutely amazing. Um, so Tamara, just on the flip side to our question before, um, what on the no, so we talked about your positive, most positive trader habits. So what would be one of your most hindering habits that you feel has really held you back or stopped you breaking through that next level in your business? Hmm my i guess in the beginning was more like when we when we would profit uh, in the beginning when we profit a lot i was like yes you know and then i'd want to go out and just buy a bunch of like new equipment <laughs> <laughs> like what are you doing <laughs> you know and, like, go and, like all of a sudden like spending like money so that was one thing because in in my family growing up though it's like whenever we got money it was like they would just like spend it on something yeah. and so i guess that was kind of a trait that i was like hmm i should probably just you know keep i was i always think of it as investing back in the business but yeah. then i i got to to the point where i'm like I guess we don't need that, you know, like things like that. I'd get excited about things in the beginning and um, that kind of held us back at specific points when we were growing. <laughs> Cause be like, yes, we had, like had all these like large sales coming in and all of a sudden the money was going back out faster. And then yeah. our account accountants are like, what are you doing? <laughs> how you build a business? <laughs> you know, because you know, it was a, we have a small team and you know, I'm like, Oh, this is fun. And you know, just doing stuff. But I mean, once you are, you know, I'd say just keep track. Like that's why it's important to get a financial planner, like things Definitely. like that. Like, knowing like now, like that's one thing that was holding me back is just um, really um, having things just go in and out, not knowing the numbers in the, yeah. in the beginning. Um, after I started learning and calculating more, I'm like, oh, I get this now. Okay, I get yeah. that. I, I part of the stuff because that thing yeah that was definitely holding me back a little bit <laughs> yeah. or maybe it was just a mistake <laughs> I don't know because I, I don't I, really uh, I, yeah I just don't there's not a lot of things that like hold me back other than you know trying to figure things out like you get frustrated like trying something over and over and researching how to do a specific strategy or if you're trying to get new leads or um, trying new Facebook marketing or you know it's all those things like I'm never like held back by it. I think that in the beginning though, like financial constraints was what was, I was like, oh, stopping me from going forward or something, you know? Yeah. No, that's perfect. 
Um, so Tamara, I'd, I'd love to know for anyone in my audience who's looking to get into filmmaking or production as a career or to, you know, branch out a bit more into that field, what would be some of the, say, three to five actionable tips you feel have really helped you or that could really help them to, you know, either start a career or progress in a career? Yeah, if it's if there's somebody's interested in, in the film industry, um, you know, figure out first, like, what type of film, like, or productions that you're actually interested in before you get, kind of jump in there, because there's so many different types of, of roles from, you know, if it's from television to, to live broadcasting to online media to filmmaking, you know, web series, uh, movies, like, there's so many different types of productions, um, but really, I actually it's a quick story i spoke at a high school um uh, basically a career day uh, a oh, couple cool. months ago and there was 135 students that that came throughout the i taught five different courses that that day they came through and i had it was cool because i had 40 students out of that 135 that came up to me asking if we had internships available <laughs> oh, i was wow. like so i obviously impacted but what i told them was you know so i asked them each in the audience i said well what are you what are you interested in? Like, tell me something. So I started pulling out like keywords. Like one girl was like, I like writing. I'm like that you can correlate with, with, with uh, the film industry. You can be a script writer. You yeah. could be a producer. You could be a set manager. You could be whatever it is. Like you're, you're writing down notes. You're collaborating with writers, whatever it is. But she's like, Oh, I didn't really think about that. I'm like, yeah. you can work in the, in the film industry and in doing what you love by writing. You know, I asked another guy, I said, what do you like to do? He was like, well, I like to edit videos. I'm like, yeah. well, obviously you can edit, you know, you can edit videos on the go for, you know, I was like, what else do you like? He's like sports. I was like, you know, there's things like ESPN or, you know, go out for like, um, like what's your favorite sport? Basketball, go apply for, you know, this, like, just think like, instead of the realm of filmmaking, like think of like video production because everything that, that like you can tie it anything basically with video production and filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a leader, you want to be a director, like you can direct people. If you manage people really well, be a producer, which is basically a project manager of a project or a film. Like the, and then these kids were like, Whoa, like, <laughs> I was like what do you like to do? <laughs> so I just like, they just tell me one thing. I was like, tell me something about your personality, you know? And, and that's what I just basically share with people is like, if you're passionate about something, research what that quality is that you have, you know, like if you love talking to people, if you love, you know, build it, bringing people together, maybe you want to be in casting, you know, maybe you want to be a recruiter for film. So you're the person mm -hmm. that's like watching people audition, like whatever that is, like there's always something that can tie into a film or filmmaking or anything or video production. And the way that I put it that way out there, people got to think more, you know, cause you can do marketing. If you like marketing, if you like social media, you can be the social media manager for a new film coming out, you know, yeah. get in with a company like Netflix, you know, yeah, like boy, whatever yeah. it is, there's so many platforms and abilities to use skills throughout any type of filmmaking really. So. Wow, that's great advice, and and to get 40, 40 students out of one hundred and thirty five, wow, that's that's incredible. Like just the build engagement alone with like students is a hard thing. So uh, I, I've watched some of your presentations too, Tamara. They're they're amazing. Like, I've loved some of the ones you've done. Um, so oh, yeah, being being able to impact youth is is such a powerful thing because you know I can relate. That's probably my biggest frustration is in life is through high school where you just feel like nobody cares. Like. You feel like you have no guidance, no direction, like nobody cared about you. So being able to connect with those students and I think that's the same with everybody, regardless of where you're at, whether you be young or old, is being able to pull out these ideas out of your head because quite often we just soap so much going on upstairs that we can't get narrowed down onto our ideas or really, you know, we need an outside perspective to look at things and, and go, okay, so this is what, this is why this is good. This would fit in here like what you did with those students. I think that's, that's incredible. And they would have walked away, hopefully pursuing uh, something in the career uh, in the film industry. Yeah, no, it's cool. Cause I had one kid come up to me. I remember he's a junior and he showed me his Instagram and he has over 10,000 followers wow. and he's, he's built it since I met him a couple months ago. He, he follows up with me and he's like, that's look cool. what we're doing. And uh, he does amazing photography. That's and awesome. I told him, I was like, have you ever thought about teaching other young entrepreneurs and millennials how you do what you do? And he's like, no. I was like, I was like, think out of the box. You know, I was like, 
you could create, I'll just give him an example. I'm like, I don't know if he'll, he'll do it. I'm like, but you could create content or a course showing people how you grew your Instagram. And he was like, oh, you know, yeah. cause he's, he's, he's young, you know? And, yeah. and, and, but the young ones are also like our powerhouse generation coming up. Yeah, big, big <laughs> thinkers, for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're so intelligent, especially with the fact that most of them have grown up with technology, the way that it just keeps transforming. And like, I didn't have all this technology when I was young, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's funny you said about the young kid who's the photographer. Um, I've got a guy coming up on my show. He's 17. Uh, and he was t- t- he's talking about uh, basically how he started his photography business while he was in high school and his business is so busy now that he's had to put off school and basically leave school because his business is just going crazy he's had like you know a lot of events he does amazing photography so yeah it's it's amazing what you can achieve when you put your mind to it and you know when you follow through and take action on things so that's just a testament to it you know if you can still do it in high school you know there's no excuses really Exactly. Yeah. Fully agree with you. And that's like you said, like, and I'm a complete massive action taker. And so I just left and right, just keep, keep keep trying, keep testing, you know, trial, error, whatever, fall on your face, get back up, like just keep trying and keep going forward. And cause you know, every day just passes and then that's behind you. (laughs) Just keep going forward. I love that. I love that mindset. I think that's amazing. So I just going to throw a bit of a random question at you. I love to throw this at all of my guests. Um, uh, something I've learned, so from my own counseling, there's a, a style called solution-focused therapy. Um, and there's a question called the miracle question. So imagine if you went to sleep tonight, Tamara, and uh, when you woke up the next morning, a miracle had occurred. Everything you ever wanted to impact or everyone you wanted to impact in the world had come true. Um, there was no financial roadblocks and no mental obstacles holding you back. What would be the impact you'd want to make on the world and why would it be so important to you? Well, if that was the case, I'd want to wake up and, and just make a movie out of it and then <laughs> turn around and make that into a film uh, <laughs> that nice. I could share and impact even more people. <laughs> yep. um, every time I think about, about something like, like that, though, like I really do, like if I woke up and I was like, everything's created, you know, everything's done, you know, but I always think like, what else can I do next to impact even more? So I would probably wake up <laughs> and just be like, hmm, okay, now let's do it again you know or like like we're you know go a new route with it you know because one of the things that I want to do next is create an an, my fourth film um about basically talking about like pivotal moments in lives and um really impacting inspiring people through that so uh that that will come it will come up um at some point here probably probably start production more closer to 2018 um right now it's in very much pre-production stages but um yeah it's those types of things so if i wake up and i had everything i would basically want to just keep doing what i'm doing to create something else that's gonna just impact more on what i just did you know or created or so yeah I think that's amazing, like, too, how you said, you know, create a movie about it. I think that's brilliant. So be able to document and share that with more people to make an even bigger impact. What a great response. Well, it's funny because I want to write a book, and I'm not one to to read a lot. Everyone's always like, oh, you know, you, you got to be, you know – you have to read to be, you know, learn more on education. And, and I'm more of like a visual person and yeah. I listen to more podcasts and yeah, stuff. So I just, I'm not a big reader, but I want to write a book at some point and talking, I didn't get into a lot of my deep journey, but I have so many things that have led on this journey. So there's a point, there's a point though in my life where I'm like, that's going to be where I would write the book. <laughs> you know, you just like, you just know, you know, just like, hmm, cause most people will write a book and, and, you know, they write a book just to write a book because they just want to become a best-selling author. I want to write a book because my story is going to touch people on multiple stories throughout my journey, you know, and connect, um, and just inspire and impact other people to just take massive action and keep going no matter what happens. That's so. perfect. I can't wait to see your book and your uh, movie come out. I, 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 yeah, really, really looking forward to that. I think it would make a massive impact on the world. Definitely. So Tamara, we're just getting ready to wrap up soon. So what would be some of the parting advice that you'd love to share with my audience or something that's been really pivotal in your career that you feel has really helped you that you'd love to share with my audience? Yes. Let's see. Well, I think I said most of it but already. And um, I, again, uh, example, I'll use a personal ex- experience. <laughs> if you're If you're set on something and let's say you're, 
you, you're going from point A to point B, like whatever is in between, like don't ever like stop to get to point B. Like story here real quick. I was, when we were filming Inspired by Eleven, I thought it'd be cool to take a road trip from Seattle, Washington to Los Angeles in my car yeah. and take all, all the film equipment and stuff. And we're coming down in this, this, this interview with Michael Parrish Dudell, who's the, the author of the Shark Tank books. So we were driving down to interview him. Just think of it this way. Like, so we, we were driving, my, my car began to overheat. The pump had oh. exploded and I'm going up the hill and steam's coming out of my car oh, my and my car breaks down right in between the sign of Oregon and Washington. It's like, or, or California and no, California and Oregon. And so we got, oh. we'd gone through and it says, welcome. My car dies right in front of welcome to California. And my whole thought process <laughs> was, was like, okay, what do I do next? It's a Sunday. Uh, most things are closed. There's not a lot around here near Wairaka. Like, what is it like? I'm just trying to, to like figure out what to do, right? Like, like no matter what happens, I could have like stopped right there and been like, "Hey, Michael, we're not coming. We we have to reschedule." You know, I I say to if you have point A to point B, you figure out how to get to point B, no matter what happens in the way, because you can have so many distractions, so many upsets, so many fails. You know, like I we literally coasted my car down to a gas station. Where nice. we're like, yes, we got the last like coolant, right? Oh. So we put the cool, we put the coolant in, and we're like, yes. But then we realize as soon as we put that in, that it's a slit and it's bubbling out, right? Oh, no. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, okay, well there's no auto shops open right now, so we have to wait, right? And then we, I'm like googling on my phone, like barely any reception, things like that. Like, I've I figured out what to do from getting my car into a shop to, to getting a hotel that was close enough walking dis to distance to rent the car, to transfer all of our film equipment to getting up and be able to drive another like 10, 12 hours to get to LA, basically showing up at 3am when we had, wow. you know, an interview at 8am, like oh, be, crazy. just do stuff. Like Yo. think, think, how can I fix something? How, like, don't give up. Like that's, that would be my, my parting. That was like a story advice, but wow. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And it really took me there too. Like I've, yeah, I, I've had cars break down and stuff. I can't imagine if it was such an important thing or an interview and that. So yeah, I, I think that's, that's great <laughs> advice and it shows, shows your incredible persistence and uh, your mindset as well. I think, as I said, you, you should be really proud of everything you've achieved, Tamara. It's incredible. And the journey you've come through and I, I really appreciate you sharing this with my audience and myself today. I've got a, a lot of takeaways from it. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me on here today, Paul. Thank you. Um, so, Tamara, just to finish up, uh, where would be the best place to reach out or get in contact with you? Say if there's anyone in here uh, looking to, you know, take their business to a new level or potentially, you know, expand their brand, personal brand or their business, where would be the best place to get in contact? Yeah, if if there's an individual out there that's, you know, really looking to step up their, their video quality on their brand or pr produce like high quality um, trailers for their brand or their events, I'd say go to seriestakeproductions.com just to see what our business is all about, um, how to create, connect and inspire through epic visuals, through storytelling, a uh, place to, to follow me or connect with me. I type in uh, director Tamara Thompson. You can go like my, my public uh page uh and connect with me there or even instagram or twitter it's at serious take pro would be uh, my own my own accounts so perfect thank you so much again for your time tamara i really appreciate you thank you sharing you. Your, your insights and experience with everybody it was uh yeah it was really incredible to hear your stories and i love how smoothly and easily you can tell stories and you had me completely engaged in all of them which was really cool so um yeah i look forward to seeing the amazing work you do in the future and uh as soon as your book and your, your movie come out, I'd love to post a link to that. I'll post all the links in the show notes today for you. So thank you again, Tamara. Thank you, thank you so much, Paul. Appreciate it. And guys, stay tuned next week where we've got another incredible guest to come on the show. He's really going to help take your career to a whole new level. So stay tuned then.